Before I begin this video, I just want to tell you guys that I am partnered with some of the companies I mentioned in the video. If you like what you see and you're interested in the software, go down and you will find discount codes and all kinds of good stuff. Purchasing the software through me supports the channel and my goal and mission to educate. But just remember, I love you guys and there's no obligation to buy through me. About five years ago, I started getting offers from small startups to integrate AI in my workflow. I wasn't impressed by the results then, but I knew this AI thing might be cool and exciting. Fast forward to today, and not a day goes by when people are not discussing integrating AI into their day-to-day -day tasks. Now, I've been using various integrations of AI, primarily for photo portrait editing. I hopped on the bandwagon quickly and even partnered with companies I had no doubt would help me with my photo portrait editing workflow. Now, last year I put together a video called Will AI Replace Photographers? The video concluded that AI would eliminate repetitive and mundane portrait photo editing tasks. But human innovation and originality would likely remain the photographer's domain. For at least the next 10 years, innovation remains the monopoly of humans for the following reasons. Whenever we think all has been done, an innovator comes out and does something groundbreaking. From what I understand from AI image making right now, different is not in the cards. You see, artificial intelligence image making will always rely on data sets of the past. Innovation occurs from coming out with something that totally breaks standards, molds, and misconceptions. Now, although I will never say never, creativity will always be a hard one for machines to conquer. In 2024, you can implement AI portrait editing to these aspects of your portrait workflow. AI can be used to generate a photo from completely nothing. AI can also be used for photo morphing. AI can be also used for decision list automation. So given a set of interpreted rules, AI will do edits according to edits you have done in the past. It's kind of like an enhanced version of Photoshop Actions, if anyone knows what that means. And then there's automated photo edits. This is editing a photo according to certain global aesthetic guidelines. You use these AI solutions to speed up your workflow and make it better, but you still have to develop the basics. Why? So that you know the subtleties and how to make your image better and why certain tools make your images better. So for example, Retouch for me will offer you dodge and burn, that's great, and they'll offer you a quick automated way of doing it. But if you don't know what dodge and burn does and why it helps your portrait, so you gotta make sure that you know the basics. So I would encourage everybody, even though you might use these AI portrait editing software solutions, to keep on honing your skills as an editor. That's it, let you get back to the video. Now I should cut straight to the point and tell you that I do not use AI to generate images. It's just not gonna happen. Portrait photos do not lend themselves to AI photo generation. For me, portrait editing aims to edit a picture to make the best, most flattering image of that person. Therefore, there's no point in creating a brand new mouth, adding hair to a balding person, or generating a tooth where there was none before. Some people might be comfortable with this. I am not at all. For the past year, I've used XR Photo 2024 as a standalone software. It's also available as an Adobe Lightroom plugin. You can do some really nifty photo organization tricks like organizing photos by aesthetics, searching image with a simple text prompt, and photo equipment analysis via analytics. 
Photo culling and photo organization are some of the most important aspects of photo portrait editing. I strongly recommend investing in this solution or other AI photo culling solutions like Aftershoot. I use two AI software and one group of Photoshop actions for my portrait editing, Luminar Neo and Retouch for Me. Luminar can be a Photoshop plugin or it can be used as a standalone software. I use Luminar Neo primarily as a Photoshop plugin. My go to tools in Luminar for portrait editing are Studio Light, Skin AI, and Body AI. I also use the Luminar LUTs, but technically these are not to be considered AI solutions. I could get into the details of Luminar Neo, but it's best that you check out my in-depth video on Luminar Neo. For the nitty gritty retouches like dodge and burn, eye retouching, and pinpoint healing of blemishes, I either do them myself using my skill set or I use an AI retoucher called Retouch For Me. It's an excellent AI tool that is really on another level. Retouch For Me is more subtle than many AI solutions and really caters to the professional. Where AI fails, I resort to either rolling up my sleeves and doing full on manual portrait retouching, or I use Flurn Photoshop Actions. Although actions are simply automated Photoshop edits, the Flurn actions have tapped into the brain of Aaron Nace from Flurn, and I am a fan. The actions I use from Flurn are Amazing Eyes, Flurn Black and White, and the Unparalleled Frequency Separation. Ultimately, your preferences will play a big role in what software you decide to use to do your portrait edits. In the past few months, I have found that it all comes down to pick and choose regarding how one implements AI into their portrait editing. In my case, I like to start with manual edits and let AI take over the rest afterward. But you might be someone who prefers using AI for the whole process. Now, according to my experience with AI in my photo editing workflow, I'm going to give you guys some advice. You can take it or you can leave it. Look for trial versions of the software that are tempting and do some good old fashioned fiddling. Number two, think critically while using that trial. Leave the wishful thinking at the door. Ask yourself questions like, is this really going to improve the whole process? Is this worth it? Number three, do objective time evaluation. I found that a lot of software out there, believe it or not, actually increases the amount of time it takes me to do a portrait edit. So be vigilant. And number four, before even deciding to go out there and look for AI software for your photo portraits, map out how you edit, cull, and deliver your photos before shopping for AI portrait editing software. You might find out that some of the AI photo editing software out there solves a problem you don't even have. There you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Tell me what you guys use when you're implementing AI when you do photo portrait edits. Well, I really do want to know. Comment below. You guys like, share, subscribe, and don't forget, everybody, keep on making something from nothing.